before I had him, I was in a very deep, depressed uh, yeah. state, very very depressed. It's dark times yeah. and going through like some very serious uh, family issues and stuff. And so when I found out I was pregnant for him, it it totally changed me. Mm. And like it's it 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 just like gave me a reason to live, motivated me, and I became happier. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have. That's why I have no regrets. Yeah. Like I'm like, yo, let me tell you that <laughs> that boy, he's yeah. my rock. Like I love my son so yeah. much, and I would drop anything for him right. anytime. Any I'm from a beautiful place, the part of Africa, hailing with a true five six. It's in my blood. That's a gem where the mountains rise with stories untold. The tapestry of cultures and falling so vibrant and bold. A symphony of stars, a celestial light. The drums beating echoing through the night, just like a beacon of light. A reflection that's coming up from the Nile. I'm flowing straight into the heart of Africa with timeless stories untold. Shut up. One, two, three. Bomba glad. I like that. <laughs> Welcome once again to the Ugandan Boy Talk Show on the podcast where I bring the famous people, your regular <laughs> people, your day to day people to come here and have a conversation. And um, this is a special episode. Because it's my very first episode that I'm doing in person Woo. in Uganda. How good is that? How, What's an honor? Yeah, most of you <laughs> didn't know I was in the country, but I was there for a short time. But I was able to sit down uh, with Sheila Sultan. Yes. Welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And uh, I guess I feel now pressured <laughs> because I'm your first uh, live in uh, the studio yeah. <laughs> interview. <laughs> No, I don't feel pressured. This is a uh, calm place. Yeah. Take your time. There's no hard questions. There's no wrong answer. Just feel at home. Um, we had this podcast scheduled, I think, a month back, a month or two, uh -huh. where I was gonna have you over the Zoom. Exactly. So, and then I ended up getting uh, a gig, a gig to Ethiopia. Okay. And like, and I was like, oh damn, I have to call him because mm -hmm. I like. But at least I let, I let yeah. you know, like a week. I before, really like that. Yeah? I really like that. I would, honestly, and I'm a very, very disorganized person. <laughs> so I'm also impressed with myself yeah. that I remembered that. And I was like, what do I have over this weekend? And I was like, oh, yes, I'm mm. supposed to do the interview with yeah. you. But yeah, as, apologies for that. But I'm no. glad we finally did it. Finally did it. And I think <laughs> I tell people um, best time, like there's a reason for everything. Because yeah. now we didn't do it at that time. But now here we are, we're doing it in person. Who knew that we're going to do exactly. a podcast in person? And you person? know what's amazing is that I also uh, took your virginity for radio yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at that every time I was here, yeah. We, yeah, he was on our radio show. And so in it's like, you. so we're doing vice versa. vice versa. I interviewed you yesterday, yeah. you're interviewing me. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually been a while since I've been interviewed, so yeah. That's cool, that's cool. I, I'm excited I don't like being on this other side. <laughs> well, you also went to Kasese to do the Renzori. I think the weekend that I wanted to host you yes. again, then you had that gig in Kasese. Yes, so, uh, you know, most of the time, these events, they're not, it's not something like someone calls you in a month's period uh -huh. and say, oh, there's an event. They tell you in that very week or a couple days or a couple hours <laughs> yeah. before the event and say, hey, we have this event. We want you to host it. Will you be available? So it's either to you, for you to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. And so I was informed like on a Tuesday and this marathon was uh, on a, was it Friday? Yeah, I think it was a Friday. Yes, Friday. So mm -hmm. no, it was Saturday. So I had to uh, leave on Friday. Mm -hmm. So we could wake up at Saturday, 5 a.m. So... That event, it was uh, it was Tuesday. They called me, and I was like, "Eh." So I, I was actually in the gym. Yeah. I was on the treadmill with my <laughs> with my fiance and uh, uh, our his best friend Zaki, mm. and so we were running. And I was like, I got the phone call. I was like, uh, "Let me get back to you." Then I asked them, "Like, guys, do you want to go for a marathon this weekend?" <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the faces, their faces were just like, like they were so surprised because yeah. me. Coming up for with an idea that this no weekend, market. instead of partying, let's go for a marathon. Yeah. And not only that, not just in Kampala, but in Kasese. So I told them, like, guys, everything is paid for. All you have to do is come with me. Mm -hmm. They're like, hell yeah. yeah. And so it was really, really nice. How did you guys do? So that was my first marathon mm -hmm. since high school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't practice for it? I just did. Nope. So I, like I said, I've been going to the gym. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't like 
fit, marathon yeah. fit. Yeah. So I which how many kilometers did I do? I did, I think I did fifteen. Okay, I did fifteen, and how many uh, did you walk? So. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> so basically what I did was power walk okay, just to catch my breath mm -hmm. and then I'll continue running. Okay. But I did it within uh, two hours. I two think. hours. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't remember. All I, I know is that I made it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've done a marathon in my life. I yeah. did a 5K, which yeah. was, I think that was a five kilometers or something like that. Exactly. So... I asked, because I really have no clue or idea, like five yeah. kilometers, like what does that look yeah. like? And so my fiance was like, how about you just challenge yourself? Five kilometers is kind of like, yeah. you know, challenge yourself. You <laughs> can do it. And I told him, okay, how does it look like? He's like, from Mayenga till, till like, uh, he said where? Uh, Bukoto. <laughs> and I was like, so me in my head, I'm like, yeah. can I, please? Yeah. If I walk, I I can do it because I'm white. I'm half yeah. white, right? We walk. <laughs> yeah. But eh, That's that crazy. was a real challenge, my That's guy. Crazy. Uh, there's a guy, a friend of mine in America who wants me to go to a marathon. And I told him I'm African. I just, I just show up <laughs> and I just go. Because that 5K I'm talking about, Yeah. I was going to a, a church there and the church was like, okay, we have, we need to set a representative for this 5K. I was like, I can do it. My mom is Kenyan. She was a runner back in Kenya. So yes. I just showed up uh -huh. and actually I smoked that thing. I ran in 16 minutes. That is crazy. No, but you look practice. fit from what I can see. Do you even drink alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> do you butt it? <laughs> I do. I do. Um, but anyway, it's been uh, crazy. And a lot of people in the industry might have seen you on radio. Yeah. And I was talking to a buddy of mine. I'm going to host Sheila. And like, okay, I remember her being on TV and blah, blah, blah. She yeah. worked on Urban TV. Was it? Yeah. yeah. So I've worked at lots of TV stations. In fact, I kickstarted my career with TV presenting, right? Okay. At the age of, what age was I? 12. Okay. I was 12 years old. I was on WBS. Mm. That was back in the day. Teens Club. And then uh, I did that till I was 18 while I was in boarding school. Like, so holidays, I'd go mm. do that. And uh, it was fun. Yeah. It was just all about fun. It wasn't really about money or yeah. fame. Yeah. It was just like... BNTV. Did passing time because I was a teenager. And uh, then after that, I took a break. And then I had my son. Mm. And then I went into Urban TV. That's when I created a show called Backstage Pass. Okay. And I did that with Denzel. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, yeah, that was Urban TV. I was about, what, 21? Oh, wow. And so basically it was about like going all over events, showing mm -hmm. people. It, it was like... That's why we, I would say, started influencing content create, like really yeah. showing people this is what Uganda looks like in the party scene mm -hmm. or anything to do with Uganda, yeah. uh, where there's an event. And then after that, I went to uh, Magic One HD and I did pretty much almost the same thing. But like this time around, I just added another segment where I showed people where to eat, okay. like restaurants and mm. stuff like that. So I love food. Yeah, I really do. And I wanted to show people where you can get like how, where you can get the best food and how it's prepared from scratch in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then I was interviewing people while we we're eating. So I would like interview, like, let's say Navio and we're eating food. Yeah. And, and I think like it was something different, mm -hmm. not just like sitting down like this. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no interview. offense, but <laughs> <laughs> it was something different. And uh, then after that, I went to... I went back to Urban TV okay. and we did, is it five, six, I what is the name of the show? It's been a while. <laughs> uh, is it five to seven, something like that? Huh. Yeah. Oh, and it was with DJ Krim and uh, uh, who was it? DJ Krim, me and Casimir. Yes, Casimir. Hmm. And we had, we did that show. It was really, really fun. And that's when I got pushed by NBS. Okay. And I did, uh, I did after five. Okay. In the beginning. Oh, did you work with, uh, with Katz and Katz, Roger? Douglas, okay. Mercy, DJ Roger. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we, I did catch up, right? NBS okay. catch up. Mm -hmm. So catch up was one that we were doing on Fridays. And it was basically like a, a music entertainment scene, mm -hmm. like where people are like, we have like guests and whatsoever. But then lockdown happened mm. and now we weren't allowed to have guests. Yeah. So 
we and the fact that people are at home we're like you know what let's bring the club to the people mm -hmm. let's uh, give them some like serious entertainment yeah so that's what we did every friday and it was such a vibe it was so much fun and like honestly it's just people texting me and dm me telling me like yo you are making my lockdown yeah. like so much easier. Like I get even uncles, like yeah. people's uncles <laughs> coming up to me and it's like, hey, yeah. hey oh, you know, you, you dance so yeah. well. Because people like, couldn't go to the clubs or anything. They would just exactly. bring the clubs at home. So we would be on that TV from 10 p.m. Oh. until sometimes up to 4 a.m. <laughs> Oh, why? Yeah. That we're just there to vibe, vibe, <laughs> vibe, vibe, vibe. And we loved it because that that was like our way of like also being in the right. club or something mm -hmm. like that. But we had like different concepts mm -hmm. to the show. Would have uh would have like people, uh, would have themes. Okay. Like let's say it's Halloween, uh, then we would come up with like costumes. Mm -hmm. Uh if we had like a reggae night, reggae theme, mm -hmm. we'd come up with like oh, you know, uh Red, yellow, were black. You, let me. Were you on the TV when um, in lockdown? Yes. Where they wore Black Lives Matter and they got bashed for it. Okay, like, so that one uh -huh. was not NBS catch up. It, it was, was another five, NBS after show after five, I think. which was which Zartoto was doing okay. on Saturdays. So I did the Friday show and then there was a Saturday show. Okay. So. Yeah, I kind of saw that. That was yeah. a bit crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I was like, guys, why did nobody ever check? Yeah. With like with the producer, oh, like no, yeah, with, they said all lives matter. All they lives said, matter, yeah, yeah. and I know it got a huge criticism it did, from like it did. I even people. had it over from the US, and that was a time when like yeah. that wasn't a joke. It wasn't a joke, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but like I said, it was a great time, mm -hmm. and then after that, I wanted to take a break from TV. Okay, and because after the lockdown, the show didn't make sense anymore, yeah. and they weren't trying to do anything way better with the production and mm -hmm. whatsoever so i was like i got uh poached from energy radio and i was like i've never done radio and yeah. i've always wanted to do radio yeah and i was like this is my opportunity and joining energy radio it's such a fierce mm -hmm. uh radio station of where like, they accept you to be so free uh content wise idea wise creativity mm -hmm. and yeah, it's fun too. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 what I've always wanted in in a in a production house or media house. So it's yeah. That's awesome. amazing that you say you had never done radio because seeing you on radio, somebody won't even think that you had never done it before. It's like you just fit in and especially the group that you are in yeah. with the guys that you work yeah. with. It's amazing. So it's my favorite uh watching. I mean, every show on NRG yeah. is crazy because like when you see Big Boy Shark in the morning show with yeah. uh, Prim, uh, Prim and then your guys show Kasha. Like Zion. every show has its yeah. own personality. And it's crazy. Yeah. And it gets all the, <laughs> so when people out there say all oh, the childish, I've had somebody say the childish on the podcast and Zen yeah. clarified that, that it's not for everybody. It's, it's not for everybody. Yeah, it's like, By the way, uh, that's why we have different radio stations. Yeah. You choose your vibe. You know, you choose your vibe. And if energy radio is your vibe, then it is your vibe. Yeah. And like I said, there's different personalities of throughout the, the day, right? Mm -hmm. There's like the transit show, the breakfast show, the AM show, the circle show. So like the circle show, those guys are crazy, yeah. like, right? They rave on Thursdays. Yeah. And uh, our show is also crazy. Mm -hmm. We actually call ourselves fools. <laughs> like we're fools. pretty much fools. Yeah. We're the transit fools. Yeah. And we... We just joke around. We, yeah. we all we're all about having fun, and uh, you know, you might not even get our jokes, yeah. but for us, we're just vibing. Yeah. Like so, those I mean, who get it, get it. They, <laughs> those who get it, will get it. And if you don't get it, you don't get you it. You don't get it. But yeah, I've I've had from a lot of feedback from our age mates or other youth that they really love it. Yeah. And like, it's a good radio session. You find everything there. The topics that you guys cover within your show. Yeah. The things that people go through, the things that people True. actually like to relate exactly. to. Exactly. I like the one reel that you guys did where you came in the fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I was trying to like copy a Tanya. Uh -huh. And we she always has so many bags with her. Yeah. And so... <laughs> 
You know, because Italy's life is very busy. She's always busy. She, but And by then she was doing Kampala cream. Yeah. So she would come from set. She has like like a bag full of outfits, mm-hmm. shoes, about, and then she has another bag with her DJ equipment yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so I didn't have enough bags. So I used a fire extinguisher. <laughs> I just improvised. Yeah, yeah but yeah. That was crazy. I, I loved some things that you guys, whoever is behind the creative, like content that you guys create within yeah. the show, it makes, and you guys getting the attention of the social media, yeah. on the radio, yeah. it keeps people like engaging. And that's the point. We, 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 like I said, we're fools. We yeah. just do, we're just there to have fun yeah. and we keep the engagement going. But uh, I must say, like, I was, I just love doing content with mm. my fellow fools, Sean yeah. Prezi and DJ Vance. Shout out to Sean and yeah. DJ Vance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was with them yesterday. Was, my uh, was my babies. I, they're like my brother. They're mm. my little young brothers. Yeah. I take care of those ones. I love them so much. Big up to you guys. Mm-hmm. Sean Prezi and Vance. <laughs> November 2023. You posted on Instagram that you were hosting your first Nyege Nyege. Was that the first gig you hosted? 2023. No, yeah. actually. When when did you, you hosted your Nyege Nyege? Was it the first gig you hosted? No. Nyege, was Nyege Nyege the first one? Uh, Nyege Nyege. Was that my first ever gig to yeah. host? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my MC career is goes way back. Okay. So I started MC. I kicked it off with... Uh, I just came back from Denmark. Okay. And... Uh, this is when I was 21 and I had, I, I, I wasn't yet on, I had taken a break from TV. So I was like, you know what, let me try. I want to try and be an, I want to be an MC. I like what these people do mm-hmm. and I feel like a girl can actually do it. Yeah. So I got called in by these buzz scenes awards, buzz especially. Yeah, yeah. So they were doing tours around schools and uh, they were like, Sheila, would you be able to do this? I was like, let me try it. So we were doing uh, tours at schools and I started getting like the, the sense of how it's done. Mm -hmm. And you know, actually the best people to train in front of are actually kids. If you can hype teenagers, you're good to go. Yeah. Honestly speaking, the grownups, they, they get impressed by anything, Mm -hmm. but teens, oh, they're hooligans, (laughs) hooligans. So I learned it that way. Then after that, I did, I I started venturing into clubs, Mm -hmm. bars. And so I did, I had my first ever night that was, uh, back in the day, it was called, uh, Volts. Was it Volts? Yeah. I think I remember Volts, right? A club? Yes. Eh? Yeah. No, no, not Volts. Sorry. Yeah. It was called, I have forgotten the name. It's then, it was then town, uh, near, uh, Angenua and Silk, uh, club play. Yes. So I was working at Club Play. That was my first uh, ever night. Well, it was a Wednesday. I was doing it with Atlas the African. Shout out, shout outs. And so we were doing every Wednesday. Yeah. And so, and I was also doing it with DJ Dash. So that's when my career started kicking off properly with, mm-hmm. with MC. And after that, I started getting hired from other bars. Yeah. And then after that, people really started seeing how good I was mm-hmm. uh, at doing that stuff. And then I must say, I think it was Talent Africa that ever gave me the opportunity to actually MC yeah. on stages. Because, so I've known Ali uh, from Talent Africa way back mm-hmm. uh, since he used to own the club called Rouge. Okay. So we, we he, we've always like, like uh, been great friends. So he's, he's seen my potential and whatnot. And he gave me the chance to actually really MC uh, like certain events. Like mm-hmm. he would have... Lots of events like DJ turntables or with the uh, ah, guys. This is like way back, so there's so many things <laughs> to talk about. But like I said, I so I I started getting into events and then I got the opportunities and then I I don't remember actually my first ever. I think mm-hmm. the Buzz Teens Awards was yeah. my first ever gig. I remember those. And I then after it. that, I started really getting chances of doing other big gigs. Yeah. But uh, the biggest one, oh, which one was the first one? That's crazy. Yeah. Was it Yege Yege or I think it was, uh, yeah, it must have been Yege Yege. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it was Tiwa Savage. Okay. The Tiwa Savage concert? Yeah. The, if we're talking about big, big, big yeah. concerts. Yeah. Did you host the video one? Yes, I did. Okay. It was so cool. So you, <laughs> so you ranked Tiwa Savage above the video? Well, uh, yes. Okay. 
I don't know. Like, <laughs> me, I, I just. You enjoy it too. I, the drama is real. Yeah. <laughs> Nigerians, <laughs> the, hey, guys, yeah, <laughs> they can, there's drama. That was good. Uh, but yeah, how do you, like, how do you even prepare to host a show? Because I, I see the energy that you guys use. It's either similar to what the, actually the musicians use, because you need to set. The, yeah, you said the best. You said the best for the show. Like you, you open up for these artists before they show up. So you need to get the <sighs> audience like hyped. How do you, uh, how are you able to get the audience? And how do you practice for that? Because I know the artists do mic check. They come in. They practice the songs. Yes. But you as a host, like, how do you practice your? Okay, so. Um... <laughs> You know, like chemistry is so important, mm -hmm. especially among your, your, the people you work with. And uh, we actually do not have a script, yeah. but we do make a plan. Like uh, we, 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 we do show prep, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a basically already a format of like, okay, uh, first link, this is what is, is about mm -hmm. entertainment. Second link, weather and traffic. Mm -hmm. Third link, sports news, like that. So that's like a guidance. Yeah. But then other than that, we just like go straight yeah. into it and then really, really just talk like as if we're friends on yeah. radio and just like all of a sudden Sean can be like, oh man, just the other day I was on a border mm -hmm. and then this guy, uh, you know, I was wearing my white outfit. This guy just passed and then a, a water just went on me. I had yeah. to go back home yeah. because you know me, I can't come like my day is ruined after that. The show is over. It's not yeah. happening. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, yeah. You just like, so you just uh, talk about your life. And you know what's so important is that you also have to hang out with these people mm -hmm. out of the studio so that you have also similar stories. Yeah. So that's why me and Sean and Vance always hang out a lot together. Yeah. And so that we can like, like, bring those stories to the studio mm -hmm. and be like, oh, remember that guy, how drunk he was? <laughs> hey, then wait, <laughs> then that babe. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, so that's, you, that's really cool. yeah, that's the whole point. And you really want to like, and you want the the listeners to understand that there's actually friendship, there's chemistry. Mm -hmm. And that's why the show is so good. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, how about like on, uh, on the, like on an event, yes. do you coordinate with the DJs on the type of music <laughs> they are playing for you to hype? the people so it also like like uh depends on what kind of dj it is right okay. so i know i know the djs that uh, that like i've listened to them right mm -hmm. and i'm like oh this dj is my vibe but we also talk to each other he, he asked me okay what's your vibe when yeah. it comes to mc and uh they're out i'll be like ah oh, today i don't want i'm a piano mm -hmm. today i want house today i want uh some afro beats yeah. maybe r&b let's go old school it also depends on what kind of event it is mm -hmm. so if it's if it's an old school event uh you can't be playing i'm a piano yeah so it all comes down to also reading the crowd mm -hmm. seeing what the crowd likes what kind of crowd is it is it old is it young yeah uh, is it in a party mood or is it like in a chilled mood? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes I go with the flow with the DJ and other times me and him just coordinate. Yeah. yeah. No, I always watch those events and I'm like, it's, you know, God gives people with the talent or things to do. Like, yeah. if you put me up there, I cannot even talk shit about <laughs> what you guys do because like, you put me out there, I look at the crowd and the yeah. crowd look back at me like, so now what next? It, like, I don't to know be honest to with you, MC is not easy. Yeah. I think it's, it's harder than it's the hardest job yeah. when it comes to the being in the media industry because you're basically also preparing that crowd <clears throat> for an artist mm -hmm. for, so that, that artist can also be enjoyed like yeah. ready and happy that okay yeah. the crowd is excited they're ready because there's nothing worse than going to a crowd and they're just Quiet. staring yeah. at you yeah, I was, I was talking about that with the DJ. I had a DJ on the podcast. I was like, man, you have to get those people hyped up. And when you see, he was saying he feels bad when people are sitting in yeah. a club and he's playing music. Bro, like, <laughs> what to get bro, up and dance. You, it can kill your vibe. Yeah, you feel like you feel like you you're just not good at what you're doing. Like yeah. nothing impresses them. And by the way, like there's nothing worse, especially when you go to this village, village like out of Kampala. Yeah. Those guys can have malo. <laughs> no, they're just staring at you. The, and by the way, they're happy that you're there. Yeah. And like, but they they rather have their phones out or just like, they're like, wow, look at, you. Look at she, she's beautiful. Or, yeah. or like, they're just there. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of getting in and they just party. <laughs> they don't know what to do. Oh God, they're just so vibe. amazed. Vibe, vibe. Yeah. But anyway, in your, 
you you switching from TV to radio. What are some of your memorable th- uh, events in like TV? And then what are some of your memorable events in radio, especially at NRG? Okay, so TV, I would say it's the lockdown. Yeah. That was my f- best ever. I think like that really kicked off my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of the fact that everybody was watching TV. <laughs> they had nothing else to do. <laughs> nothing else to do. Um, and also because it was fun and yeah. I got to MC. And I think also another a favorite of my memory is doing all the shows that I did because mm-hmm. I have... I have been in this industry for so long and you, 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 some of so many artists that you've grown with, yeah. you've, you've interviewed and you've built relationships and friendships with, and, uh, them also like respecting your hustle and knowing where you have come mm-hmm. from. So I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great ride with, with TV and being able to also like really have those artists or yeah. celebrities trust you when it comes to interviews because right. not so many of them like mm-hmm. interviews no. because they think that you're always there to attack them but i'm their friend mm-hmm. and i always like say like hey what do you want to talk about right. are you comfortable with this and we just have a fun time mm-hmm. and that's that's what i i wanted to 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 make sure that to show people that this is what true journalism is right this is how it's supposed to be just you having your say uh, the honest truth out there and you're, you're, you know, showing people your real self, being comfortable and mm-hmm. not always being attacked, attacked. Yeah, because I feel like most of the journalists we have in Uganda and Epas talked about this when he was on the podcast, they want to get clip bait. They want to find out what's making news. Yes. Like, who is Epas dating? Who was Epas with yesterday? Exactly. Stuff like that. But there's a lot of other things you can learn from him. Exactly. Besides, There's yeah. underlying things that you you that are that you're not seeing. You because mm-hmm. you know in Uganda, I wouldn't say even in Uganda, just mainly people just want always like they want drama. Mm-hmm. They want yeah. the yeah. worst part of you. Mm-hmm. They want to they want gossip. Yeah. But they don't want to know what, what what's your take on politics. Mm-hmm. They want to know like oh who are you sleeping with yeah, who right. you right. who were you with last night yeah. or. What is happening? So yeah, it's it's yeah. it's fucked up, but it is what it is. Uh, the end of it all. It's entertainment business, and mm-hmm. uh, I I don't know. Like you know what's so crazy? Like my fiance even told me like Sheila, I'm actually glad you're being interviewed because like you're like you have so many like opinions right. and like so many things to talk about that people don't see that side of you. Mm-hmm. You only and because I'm actually I have social anxiety. Okay. Surprisingly. Wow. I do. I have ADHD. I have social anxiety. And I feel like it has increased over the the, the older that I get. Mm-hmm. Um I, I I always like to be around people I know. I don't like new people. Yeah. Uh, it gives me as uh, lots and lots of anxiety. Yeah. So I, but then surprisingly, I'm also a social person. So it's, it all depends on like <laughs> what kind of, yeah. what kind of side, like which, what kind of time do you catch mm-hmm. me or which area are we in? So like I, I ended up like having panic attacks when mm. I'm in very, very crowded places. Right. And uh, that's why, like, most of the time I can be, like, backstage at a concert. <laughs> yeah. There's even VIP, but yeah. still I'm backstage, backstage just chilling, doing my yeah. job. <laughs> I'm here for a reason. That makes me want to ask you a question, like, how did you find it easy to accept to be on the podcast? Uh, no. Because we had never met each other. Yes. And, like, you... You're like, who's this guy? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you've never met the person. And you're like, what's going to No, ask? I saw, I, but I have seen your podcast. Okay, yeah. I have seen your interviews and they, you're really good. Thank you. At what you like when I it comes to interviewing. Yeah. So that's why I felt comfortable to come. Yeah. And uh, you, you also like, I feel like you do your proper research. Mm-hmm. You're not, like, I, like, you're, you're, like the way I said, you're not here <laughs> to attack me. Yeah. <laughs> you're here to just vibe with yeah. me and just find out what's yeah. what, who I am and what's up. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't like interviews. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was scared of interviews, but then when I said a podcast, I was like, I want people to be comfortable yes. with the podcast. I, that's why I don't even tell my guests what I'm going to ask them about. I just want them to show up and we're going to have a conversation. I'll do my job of the research and the things I want to talk about. Yeah. And I don't think I didn't create this platform for bashing people, attacking people. Yeah. I just wanted to impact exactly. on that person, like from somebody's. Journey, By the so. way, like, and that here's another thing is that 
if you realize my social media, it's mostly what the work that I do. Okay. You never, it's hardly rare of showing my, my personal life because mm-hmm. I'm a very private person. And also like, I don't like, uh, you know, I'm not much of a trend. Okay. Like yeah. these things of, I don't get involved in fights. I don't mm-hmm. get involved in gossip. I don't get involved in anything. I'm just here to do my, my, <laughs> my duty for, uh, entertainment current because Entertainment is my career. This is yeah. my career. It's not as if like a banker is out there <laughs> <laughs> saying like, oh, you know, you're, 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 anyway, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. But like, yeah, I, I, when, whatever I post on my Instagram, it's a work that I do. Right. Oh, I'm only at work. Mm-hmm. So my personal life is mostly on my stories. Yeah. So be something that only people who really, mm-hmm. really want to know what's going on with me. And actually that, that brings me to, you mentioned your son yeah. a while back, and that's one of the things I've noticed on your social media. You love yeah. him so much. I, I, have, love, I have a daughter. I love <laughs> that girl so much. Like she's she's a piece of my heart. Yeah. But talking about your son yeah. and um, how have you been able to balance or so juggling being a mother and your successful career of being in the radio? Yeah. You're talking about you have to go to his uh, sports, sports day. Sports day today. after you know, this. Like yes, I have yeah. sports day. So uh, it hasn't been easy, uh, but I can say that. It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. So I am so grateful for my family. I'm grateful for friends. I am grateful for my fiance too. He's been my rock. Uh, you know, him and him and Liam have built their own re- relationship to a point that they love each other so much. And he's he's always like we we do everything together. Mm-hmm. And but be- before I met him. It wasn't easy, like I said, but I had my grandmother. Yeah. And uh, I guess like I'm also lucky that I had him when I was young. So I, you know, I am strong and uh, I have the time and yeah. patience. And he, I also didn't, I also made sure I didn't work. I didn't have like a nine to five job where okay. it's Monday to Friday. Mm-hmm. I had the NBS job and it was only Fridays where yeah. I worked. So it was I was able to be in my son's life a lot mm-hmm. and not, uh, and you know, crazy enough, I, I know some people that don't even live with their kids yeah. because they're not able to, they have right. to live, let, let the kids be with either the, the other parent, yeah. or they have to let the kid live with their grandparents. So I'm blessed to have been able to have my child mm-hmm. be with me from day one till this very day. I look at that, uh, like I follow you on social media and I see the love you have for him, everything you do for him. And I just appreciate that. He's, a, th- he's a reason why I'm alive, Yeah, to be honest. He's that's, that's he's deep. my reason, he's my motivation. He's a reason why I'm breathing. Because when before I had him, I was in a very deep, depressed yeah. uh, state. Very, very depressed. It's dark times. Yeah. And going through like some very serious uh, family issues and stuff. And so when I found out I was pregnant for him, it it totally changed me, mm. and like it's it 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 just like gave me a reason to live, motivated me, and I became happier. Yeah. So yeah, I have that's why I have no regrets. Yeah. Like I'm like yo, let me tell you that <laughs> that boy, he's yeah. my rock. Like I love my son so yeah. much, and I would drop anything for him right. anytime, any day. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep right there, and the, that's the same love to everybody who has a child and. Sometimes when we have kids, you go through a lot of like struggles, yeah. challenges. Um, yeah. I just flew with mine on the plane and I was like, oh my God, I've never. <laughs> Wait, how old is yours? One and a half. Oh Lord. <laughs> why are you traveling with them? What, what memories are you going to remember? Why do you have to come here to, to Uganda to see the, the, the grandparents and stuff? But... I still love her regardless. Yes. She was crying, doing oh, everything, but yeah. um, it's well nothing, done. nothing well done. that. So we're going to have to do it again. But earlier when we were talking, you mentioned Talent Africa in part yes. of your journey, and I believe they're managing you. Yes. How have they helped your growth and having worked with them in to bring up so, your talent? So Talent Africa, when it comes to events, honestly, they're the best. Yeah. The setup, the arrangement when it comes to like music selection, when it comes to vibe, when it comes to like what you're going to expect from the event, especially the ha- Halloween parties. Yeah. And then they also have like, of course, Nyege Nyege. And they come up with so many like different kinds of concept of events that's mm-hmm. different, right? And it's, su- it's such, uh, and they're professional. They're mm-hmm. so professional. Uh, I feel like they also like, when it comes to payment, 
they're top top. Right. They know how to really pay artists, yeah. MCs, DJs a very good price. Because some people just take advantage. Mm-hmm. They go, ah, yeah, come here. I want you to MC 100 because you're an MC. They're mm-hmm. like, ah, I can get anyone. But truly speaking, they it comes, you being an MC comes with a lot. Yeah. You have to get your outfit right. You have to make sure you uh, look presentable, makeup, hair, mm-hmm. and then also, because your brand also matters. Yeah. And then also, how many hours am I going to MC? Yeah. You're, you're paying me 100K for five hours. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> Are you mad? Bro, this, like, let me get you this guy on the speaker that yeah. goes on a truck moving around. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, it takes, so Talent Africa really do respect people's, mm-hmm. uh, people in the entertainment industry or they when it comes to singing, DJ, MC, also like vendors, right. like anything. If I I feel like any no one has ever had an issue mm-hmm. when it comes to working with them. So like yeah, big up to Talent Africa, and they have done amazing by giving me the, that opportunity and platform by having the best events. Yeah, they also they bring like the, the craziest artists oh, into yeah. Uganda, right? Yeah. So for example, Sean Paul, mm-hmm. uh, Diplo, Major Laser, uh. Uh, Tiwa Savage and so many more right. so many more so having that opportunity like Tiwa Savage mm-hmm. and your management is the one who's brought her and yeah. they're like well you are the MC yeah, I'm like MC. oh my god thank you very yeah. much for trusting in me for that <laughs> but no, that's I great. will kill it <laughs> I've had good things about Talent Africa even especially from that show Tiwa Savage yes. the way they do their work and professionalism um, I like that I like when people respect your work and respect yes. the person. So. But that's because, like, truly speaking, he's been in the game for so long. Yeah. So he 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 learns and he's he's so hardworking. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, I'm talking about Ali Bai, by the way. Yeah. He's very very hardworking. So I really have so much respect for him, yeah. and I see him as a big brother too. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he he mentors me, and yeah, so many. Uh, advises me and uh, we always like have discussions of like okay yeah. what's our next step yeah. how do you what do you what do you see yourself in the next five years or yeah. two years yeah um also following your socials you like a world traveler you've gone through like the europe a lot <laughs> i think when you you had a vacation you went yes. to australia and then you just hear all those spots yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you, is this something you like to do to travel yes okay. i love traveling uh especially uh, especially now that I'm with my fiance, okay. we because we, uh, we are planning to have kids, mm. but not now. Yeah. So we want to first enjoy this. announcement on the event <laughs> <the> show. <laughs> so not yet. Uh, hopefully after marriage, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you have put a ring on it. I feel like we already oh, have. Already did. Yes, you already did. It. I feel like we already had. Uh, we already had. So we've just met. We've, yeah. ju- we've just been together for two and something, two years and something months, yeah. right? And I feel like we we still just want to enjoy each other. And we already have Liam, mm-hmm. and we want to travel and see the world together, and also like really go crazy with our careers, mm-hmm. like see where um, how much we can go before we a little bond of joy interrupts yeah, it, yeah. you know? Because it's gonna be we want to put all our attention to that child right. when that time comes. So for now, we just want to love each other, enjoy each other's company, and you know, travel, see the world together, make some memories before we can really mm-hmm. uh settle down and uh, start a, a, a another child oh, family. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh so yes, traveling. I love yeah. traveling, especially Europe. So yeah. he's from Austria. Okay. And I'm from Denmark. So okay. I'm half Danish, half Ugandan. Okay. And so we our first ever holiday together was going to each other's countries. Oh, okay. So we went to Austria. I met his family and he, we went to Denmark and he met my family. So my dad is Danish and he's there. My whole Danish family is there mm-hmm. and they've never been to Africa, by oh, the wow. way. They, they have like, honestly speaking, sadly, yeah. my Danish family is like, <laughs> they really believe in everything they see on TV, mm-hmm. especially during that time of Cody. Oh Lord. <laughs> 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 eh, and even coronavirus yeah. they thought like it's it's really deep like yeah. eh, Ebola, oh, Ebola. Lord. <laughs> it's just like America they're like oh, oh why just come back come yeah. back what are you doing there yeah. they're like they don't know the, the beautiful life here in, mm-hmm. in Africa 
So yeah, they're they're really scared. Uh, yeah. there. Uh, then so yeah, then the just recently this year we went to Portugal. Okay. For Afro Nation, which was uh, yeah. a vibe. I think I saw that. Yeah. It was such a vibe, yeah. guys. You can't. You, you let me tell you. You have to make a bucket list, and my bucket list is going to all the major festivals. Yeah. Like I want to go to Tomorrowland. I want to go to uh, which other one? Coachella. Coachella. Like I want to go. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like nice. I want to like really really like say, eh, mm-hmm. but have lived life. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I love Europe. Yeah. I love I love Europe especially because I'm also like there they don't know me. Mm. Right? I'm not a silly. Yeah. You get tired. Yeah. Sometimes like all you want to do is go to the supermarket <laughs> and then like you just sit saying people, like, Sheila, how are you? Yeah. Sheila, you don't know them, yeah. but they know you by first name basis, right? Yeah. And they and you're there, you're getting certain items. Mm. <laughs> and then they selfie? judging you. <laughs> oh, it's so, a lot. Some some will come to you. Can I get a selfie? Get a picture. That too, yeah. No, that's amazing. I love traveling. And when I saw that, it was pretty cool. I was like, yeah, I get to do that. So everybody out there, you can, you need to get out and travel. Just don't stay in your little cocoon of like yeah. somewhere. Really, no, yeah. But um, one, not a one last thing, but I, I noticed you have a tattoo on your hand. What does that mean? Three? Or... I have actually 12 tattoos. You have 12. <laughs> okay. They're just well hidden. <laughs> um, I have one on my chest. Okay. I have this one. Some on my back side. Uh, so basically this one I took they're just triangles okay. by the way it's not that deep they're okay. just triangles <laughs> and then I have this one which is a double infinity sign but it looks like an Audi <laughs> <laughs> it was my first ever tattoo I actually hate it and then let's see this one I was trying to be cool yeah so I oh I got Egyptian thing signs <laughs> Let me tell you, the first your first ever two tattoos yeah. are like the worst. The worst you have no <laughs> then idea. after that, I the one on my chest is with Africa. Mm-hmm. And it has so usually women in Africa they hold bas- baskets on their heads. Mm-hmm. So like so it's something like this, right? They yeah. they carry it, they carry your pots and what whatsoever, and it's it's in a way it's like embracing, mm-hmm. right? So I have Africa on top of those hands. So it's me embracing Africa, yeah. because. Um, as much as I love my country, uh, I, my, as much as I'm from Denmark and I love Denmark, mm-hmm. but it's uh, at that time when I grew up, when I because I was born and raised there, when I grew up there, it was so racist. Mm. I was never, I never felt accepted, and I was in a very white community. Uh, I was only like white kid, I mean, yeah. black kid in my in my school. Um, I had I fa- faced a lot of like. Uh, racism there and when I did go back there also it, the winter when I get 4pm it's dark you yeah. know, 7 months of, of coldness <laughs> that can't be white you want it, there's not even a border yeah. you know you just want you can't even <laughs> you can't get a border you're there suffering and it's so systematic too Yeah, like everyone is just like the only main goal is go to work mm-hmm. be this become this accomplish that mm-hmm. here in uganda it's so laid back right you can be anything you want to be mm-hmm. by the way in this country yeah you can be anything you want to be as long as you put your mind to it mm-hmm. and that is so important that as long as you have the discipline and motivation if you work hard you you can you can earn a good living you can have a beautiful piece of land mm-hmm. you can you know, life is good here, man. Yeah. We're blessed. You don't have to run to the US like I did. You can still make it, make it here. That's why she's trying to say. Yes. But don't worry. You, you, uh, I can see you, are, you come from a plant. Are you yeah. a plant child? I thought I was, but... Ah. No. <laughs> um, no, anyway. Uh, one, one other thing I don't want to forget was the challenge of Ozambe. I loved my... Oh, Shifa, Ozambe. <laughs> Shibura. Who came up with the idea? Of so it was me, Sean, and Vance. We yeah. really wanted to do it. Yeah. But then here was a, the twist. I was not going to be the bed. Okay. Sean was going to be the Shifura. Yeah. <laughs> so, and honestly, Sean, I love you so much. But whatever you did with your eyes. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> I remember. Like, Sean Frizzy. Let me tell you, like I said, we are fools. Yeah. And it was such a vibe. And you know, like I just went to... I just went to Europe when that challenge just happened. Eh? Mm-hmm. So people didn't really get that chance to like tell me, she's like, babe, like, what, what, what were you doing? <laughs> so when I came back, then I was just like, I just came back and I entered the club mm. and some guy just said, Shifura! <laughs> <laughs> I 
was like, no, 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 no. Not even even Sean, they were yeah. calling him Shifura. Oh, my God. But yeah, it was that was a good challenge. It was it was, it was good. Big up to Hosambe and Big Shifura. Up Hosambe, yeah, <laughs> that song was uh, was a vibe, and the challenges were all crazy. Uh, ah. I remember my comment on that post when Energy posted it was just Sean Prezi and just laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> whatever Sean is he a did, fool. whatever he did with that was good. But all <laughs> of you guys like did great, even DJ Vance. Um, but anyway, I know we said a little late to do this recording, yeah. but um, we're trying to. Oh to yeah, keep completely time. forgot. Um, I wasn't looking at the time. But, but we're doing great. One um, uh, last few questions I want to ask you. One thing I, I said asking people was, what's a phrase that people say that you really hate? It's a question that just came out of the blue. Like, so for me, back in the US, people say. People in like in the Midwest, when you travel Midwest, they say, uh, what's the word they say? Um, shoot, I'm forgetting it. Um, it's gonna, my, I really hate it when they say, uh, shit, I forgot. It. <laughs> um, no, I forgot mine. But anyway, you, you tell me, you're like, what's a phrase that people say that you really hate that you don't want, you don't like them to say? Oh, oh what phrase? Even me, I'm stuck. <laughs> I'll leave that. No, this one is pretty dumb. I yeah, really yeah. hate it. Like they say, oh shit, I'm I'm trying to forget it. It's like a, mostly American down south people that say yeah. it. Um, but no, I forgot that. Anyway, let's end with this. I want you to like send out a message to a young girl out there who might have listened to your story. I know you've gone through a lot of challenges. Like yeah. even when you said having your daughter, your son, it wasn't easy with your career, the yeah. journey you've been to. Like a young girl out there who looks up up to you on the yeah. radio doesn't know your story, but maybe when they listen to this podcast, they'll get bits of this, of how your life is. What's a message you'll send out to that girl who wants to be like Sultan? Okay. Um, so my message to all the girls out there, um, believe in your dreams. And also I would say, don't, don't limit yourself. Don't just have one dream, have plenty know that you can do so much more because when I started this, I, I never thought I could be a TV presenter. I never thought that I could be an MC. I never thought I could be a radio presenter. So I keep discovering myself more and more, the more I grow and the, knowing that, oh, I have this talent. Mm -hmm. I have this talent. So, and even in this industry or in this world, it's growing so much that whoever thought that we we're going to do podcasts mm -hmm. or we we're going to do have YouTube and all that. So try as much to not, not limit yourself and you can actually do it yourself. Don't wait for someone to do it for you and don't let someone uh, be the reason why you should do it. You can, you can be your own producer. You can be your own director. You can, you have to take control of your life. Mm -hmm. Especially for me, I produced, managed, directed so many shows by myself. Some of them were had no budgets. Some of them, the camera guys never got paid. And this is like from TV stations. Yeah. And but we we had a passion for it. We're like, if we keep releasing content, if we keep persisting, we will end up being recognized and get that uh, pay that we deserve or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so have some patience, be yourself, always be yourself and uh, be happy in this life yeah. because you have only one life. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. I tell a lot of people, you mentioned something about you can be your own presenter, host. Like when I'm in the US, I don't think I had time to talk about this on the podcast, but I do my video in my basement. Like I see my basement. Yeah. Camera looks at me. So then I talk. And yeah. then I talk to the person in Uganda. Yeah. They send me the footage in Uganda. I and it all it, came with one in, small yeah, idea. Like put it up there. Um, <laughs> so you can definitely do anything, everything you want. You don't have to like wait for whoever to do something. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have yeah. to like just start with what you have. Um, three questions that I want to end with. These are short answer questions. Okay. What's the life lesson you've learned in life to this point? Uh, life lesson. It's not that deep. No, that's not that deep. <laughs> it's um, not that deep. It's not. Uh, what gets you excited about life? Uh, uh, what gets me excited? I would say friends. Friends. Okay. Friends excite me. Yeah. Like, especially when we all come together, mm -hmm. it, I just become so yeah. overwhelmed yeah. because, uh, they, they, they make me, they are, they're, they're 
they're my supporters. Mm -hmm. They make me real. They know who I am. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're able to release your stress. Yeah. You're able to have fun, make memories. So, yeah, I... I friends excite me yeah i like that too i get i like being around people i like yeah. being around friends i usually get a day and we get all my friends that you just come to my house we do a bunch of stuff i like that i thought we were gonna say hosting parties do you ever get tired of parties <laughs> i get tired yeah. by the way i get tired people might think that okay i used to be love i used to love party right yeah. but now that i am i am i've come to an age where i'm like i prefer actually being at home mm -hmm. and just going out once a week like yeah. you know but now ever since september i've been going back to back yeah. weekends doing like my voice is even about to go yeah. um do, going back to back weekends hosting events and i'm so exhausted mm -hmm. i'm tired no yeah i get that um but it is what it is it is what it is you gotta get them <laughs> uh final question it's a signature question for the podcast who yes. would you like to see on this podcast next as a guest sean breezy exactly dj vance <laughs> oh y'all next you're next <laughs> you got next anyway uh Solta, it has been amazing to sit down with you yes i could have talked to you like for hours uh, but i know but like, even me i just run. realized uh, yeah it's thank running. you so much for having me yeah. i am uh truly honored to be your first live interview yeah and um you know, I wish you all the best because Thank what you. you're doing here is really awesome and it's something different. And uh, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. I mm -hmm. hope I didn't say, uh, I hope I said what you needed to hear. Yeah. And uh, and by the way, I'm not much of a, I never like to be an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, truly, a I'm a mad babe. <laughs> so why are you trying to be inspired by me? <laughs> like, Guys, me all I do is live this life, yeah. enjoy it, earn from it, and just be happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, bam, if you see me in the ballads, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's lifestyle, like, yeah. you know? Anyway, all the best, guys. Thank you. Hey there, my name is Bonnie Chibuka, the podcast host of the Ugandan Boy Talk Show. Thanks for watching and listening to my podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Also, leave a feedback on this podcast so that's how we grow. Thank you very much and be blessed. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Sheila Salter from 106.5 Energy Radio. I do the transit show with Sean Prezi and DJ Vance. I am a TV presenter, radio presenter, MC, and uh, I am uh, the queen of the mic. So I've been hosted by the Ugandan Boy Talk Show here at the Dance Off Studios. And I can't wait for you guys to watch this episode because it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank Just you too. It. We did yeah. it. Did it. Thank oh, you so much, so guys.